Hey everyone, Austin here again with another quick play. Today we're going to be rolling through Chuck Rock 2 for the Sega CD, as I just inserted into my drive. But yeah, we're going to play through Chuck Rock 2, Son of Chuck. I actually just recently did the Sega Genesis version of the first game, as opposed to the Sega CD one. Um, and we're going to follow that up with Part 2. So Part 2 on the Genesis and Sega CD is nearly identical. There are a couple of uh, slight changes. For one, uh, the Sega CD version actually has a actually really nice animated intro. It's one of the best animated intros on the console. It's got a lot of personality, but it's colorful and it's full screen. And, um, yeah, it's really fantastic. Um, however, we're going to go ahead and just skip right through it because <laughs> there's a lot of talking on it and I'm talking and it's just going to sound kind of weird. So, um, but definitely recommend going, going and checking out like a long play of this and just watching the intro in full. It's actually pretty fun. So we're going to actually start off here by, uh, going into our options menu. Um, you've got normal game and then you've got hard game. We're going to leave this on normal, which is the default difficulty. Now, I am going to talk about various differences between this and the Genesis version. And uh, the, one of the biggest differences right away is normal in the Genesis is actually called easy mode. And then the Sega CD's hard game is actually the Genesis version's normal mode. So there is no hard in the Genesis version, it goes easy and normal. So if you're playing the Genesis version for some reason, which again, it's basically the same game, um, you want to do easy on that if you want the normal, you know, the difficulty balance for, for normal. Not much under controls and sounds, we're going to go ahead and just hit start here, and then we're going to jump into our first level. A big difference between this and the Genesis version is obviously the CD soundtrack. Uh, the CD soundtrack sounds really good in this game. Uh, the Genesis re music can be really good as well, but just uh, I find different uh, music tracks in that game are are more interesting than some of the CD tracks. And some of the CD tracks, like this first one, are way more interesting than um, you know the cartridge equivalents. Uh, but yeah, you're a little baby Chuck here, and uh, you swing this uh, massive mallet, or not really mallet, uh, this hammer or a club, and. Uh, it's actually kind of interesting. Uh, you'll notice that your club's animation starts from behind. The hitbox is actually active then. So in a lot of cases, you actually attack enemies from the, the your backside as opposed to your front side. And uh, so it takes a little while to get used to. If you're only used to the first Chuck Rock, Chuck Rock 2 feels very, very different. And there's definitely a uh, an adjustment period as a result. Uh, the game's not quite as fast paced as Chuck Rock 1. And uh, your airborne attacks in particular, as you guys probably saw when I was doing my quick play of that game. I was doing a lot of jump kicking and stuff like that. I don't do a lot of air attacks in this game. I mean, sometimes when, when you know, necessitated. But uh, generally, I would try to attack uh, on the ground as I have better reach and I have a little more control over what's happening. You do have these, uh, these rocks here. You can actually uh, attack them and move them around, use them as platforms. So there is a little bit of the Chuck Rock, no pun intended, aspect, where you do actually, you know, uh, utilize rocks uh, as platforms and stuff like that. Uh, it's not used as much as it is in Chuck Rock 1, but it is here. Now this guy we will attack and then he'll propel us upwards. We're going to go ahead and get all this little candy. There are quite a few uh, little point icons like that in this game. They're good to get because you do earn extra lives from score in this game. Uh, also, you have hidden uh, hidden points as well. If you just if you wax just random areas of the screen, uh, you'll actually get some bonus points as well. So this is one of our animal buddies. If we hit A to jump onto our or climb onto our club, um, we will actually mount the enemy, not the enemy, but our our little buddy here. And here's some of these uh, secret bonus points. They don't give you a lot. It's like a hundred points each. Nothing crazy. One thing I like about the animals in this is that uh, they generally move pretty quickly. So on the levels with animals, those levels are a lot more brisk than the levels where you're just uh, baby Chuck. But with this guy, we can take the top route and get ourselves some uh, good bonus points. Again, doing that gives us some extra lives. Now, I had mentioned it in my Wolf Child playthrough. Um, but just like Wolfchild, you can actually go behind certain sets of spikes in this. Now we're going to have to actually uh, dismount him because he cannot fit up there, unfortunately. But this is our transition to our next, uh, next screen, our next section. 
Now, unlike Chuck Rock 1, uh, I find that Chuck Rock 2 is much more gimmicky in its, uh, its stage, uh, you know, mechanics and things like that. Uh, so I find that compared to Chuck Rock 1, Chuck Rock 2 has a higher difficulty curve. Difficulty learning curve, I should say. Once you know what you're doing, uh, at least on the default difficulty, I'd say the game's actually pretty easy. But if you are playing this for the first time, uh, there's a lot of stuff that can go wrong. There's a lot of stuff that will catch you off guard. And so it can be a frustrating first time playthrough. Uh, it is definitely one of those games where it, it's better the, the more you know it. It's definitely that kind of Western developed game in particular. A lot of Western developed platformers were like this, where they uh, were more interesting after you had already learned them. Uh, the learning process, however, could be frustrating, and that is Chuck Rock 2 in a nutshell. Um, and you'll see what I mean the farther we get into the game. But here's our first boss fight. And this is a, a common boss mechanic where uh, what we do is we just kind of wait for him to chomp down onto the ground and he will go wherever you currently are on the screen. Just hit him from behind just like that. That way I don't have to turn back around. There is a delay when you turn around. It's several frames, so uh, you're actually better off just not even turning around to attack these guys. If you wanted to, you could try to attack and jump. Unfortunately, his hitbox is not active uh, for attacking him when it's up in the air. So you have to wait for it to chomp onto the ground. So it gets a, gets a little tedious, but it is what it is. All right, and after core bosses like this, you generally go to bonus stages. And this first bonus stage, we need to, uh, we need to smack these apples down to the ground and have our guy um, eat them. And unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to get it. Let's see. Is he going to get it? One, zero. Oh, and he got it just in the nick of time. So we got ourselves 5,000 bonus points and one continue. So if you're trying to learn this game for the first time, completing the bonus stages is actually really handy. Now, unfortunately, there is no indication of what you're supposed to be doing on a lot of these bonus stages. Uh, especially the second one where you have to, you're in uh, like a, a barrel and you have to, and you're in water and you have to basically paddle. Um, you basically have to row your way to the finish line, um, but they don't tell you what buttons to push or anything like that. And it ends so quickly that uh, a lot of times you'll, the first few times I played it, I didn't get anywhere in the bonus stage. So um, definitely some, um, uh, definitely some heads up prompts would have been nice on some of these bonus levels. You want to sit on uh, these claws here, or these arms. And then we can go ahead and drop back down. This is a really, really short level, actually. It's over in a heartbeat. Now we're at, at the boss fight. And this fat guy actually appears over the course of the playthrough. He just gets, like, the brunt of, of all the pain in this game. It's pretty funny, actually. But same concept as the first boss. Just like that. He actually goes down pretty quickly. Now, what's funny is if you attack them with your back facing them, you can actually, if you're close enough, you can get two hits instead of just one. Whereas you, if you face forward uh, and try to attack them, you will only get uh, you only get one hit. So it's actually faster to kill enemies uh, when you're when you're back facing them. All right, so this is a part I actually have not figured out how to do correctly, but I, I basically take this stone over here and I come up here and I get bonus points. Come down here, and that is pretty much it. Uh, it's not possible to actually get over there with a normal jump, and I've not been able to push that rock over to the right, so I really don't know how you're supposed to do that without a damage boost. Uh, now this Venus fight flytrap looking thing, it actually propels you up. It does not hurt you. Uh, when I first played this game, I most certainly avoided it because it looked like something that would hurt me. Uh, this gimmick here, you also have to destroy all those blocks but one, otherwise this rock will not fall down. So there are some gimmicks like that in this game. You got to do things uh, in a specific order, otherwise you'll end up taking forced damage, unfortunately. So Chuck Rock doesn't really have any things like that, like the, the original Chuck Rock, uh, but Chuck Rock 2 does. This is another example right here. That was a hidden platform. 
kind of a wonder dog carryover, actually. But if you destroy these four green blocks, then you can't get up there. So, you know, lots of trial and error in this game. Likewise with this part, there's actually a gap in the floor. Get some bonus points. And I'm going to actually damage boost. I was actually doing this in my practice stream. Try to not get hurt by all these monkeys, but easier said than done, because this is a very busy level in terms of objects flying around and stuff like that. And so, yeah, it's difficult to see the monkey's bananas. Yeah, kind of an interesting soundtrack. Uh, overall, it's not as, like, funky as the Chuck Rock 1 soundtrack is. That one had some really, like, bouncy music, which was awesome. Um, go ahead and drop that banana, and the monkey comes over towards it. But it is still a, a good, interesting soundtrack. You know, it's definitely high quality and holds up really well, too. Uh, I think we can actually come through here. And I'm going to come back this way just to see if there's anything else we missed. We get propelled up. All right, so I don't want to kill that monkey just yet. I want to move this over. Now get rid of him. Oh, and I messed that up. I I hit the rock too many times. So what would have ended up happening is you bring the the banana over here. Unfortunately, it despawns and then you're just you're pretty much screwed. You can't you can't do your thing. But if you get up top, the monkey will propel you upwards to an extra life. There are very few extra lives that you can get in this game outside of points. Uh, so that is one of them where you can actually get an extra life icon. And if you're trying to get a one credit clear or even a one life clear in this game or something like that, um, well, a one credit clear specifically. Um, <laughs> with the one life clear, it doesn't matter. Um, but on a one one credit clear, you know, all the extra lives will, will make a difference. All right, so we have another banana here. We just, you know, knock it over. Again, more puzzle slash gimmicky stage design in this game. Where Chuck Rock 1 was more of like a, a basic arcade style game. We go ahead and attack that guy, and then we prop onto him with the A button. And this is just a run and jump kind of level. Kind of nice, nice change of pace. It's nice and fast. And we can actually go ahead and attack him and him. Oops, jumped too early. Now, thankfully, on I don't know if we have the same amount of health pickups on on hard mode, um, or if there's more on normal. I'm pretty sure the baby bottles, which are your health pickups, actually give you more health on normal. Uh, or, uh, yeah. All right, so this is a really fun level two with a, a really chill tune, which is pretty cool. We do have some uh, momentum-based water physics here, you know, on a kind of like in Wolf Child, on a decline, uh, you will actually gain momentum. Other than this, I think it's more communicated to be a, an actual, like, water slide or something. Now, these guys like, split off into water bits, and that the water does actually hurt you. Uh, it's not a uh, Western-developed platformer from the 16-bit era if water doesn't hurt you in some way or form. And this is not the only point in the game where some water actually hurts you. We do have some, a, a, some poisonous water drops later on in the playthrough. That could be a little challenging to see, but that's okay. Oops. Go ahead and get rid of that guy, come up here, get some point icons, and then what we'll do is knock this down here. Just like that. And I messed up there, but I want to knock it over here, then land on it, and just not worry about those uh, those blocks. And I'm just running into stuff left and right. But after this, I think, is the boss fight. And the boss fight uh, on the higher difficulty is really, really hard and inconsistent, but on, on normal, it's not too bad. What we want to do is just come to the right, jump over his water projectile, and then just attack these enemies from uh, behind. Just like this. 
because again, your uh, active hitbox uh, is, is active earlier from your backside than it is your front side, so it's actually easier to hit these guys from uh, your backside. And when he makes a sound, and your uh, uh, you see him grimace, uh, that's when you're actually doing damage to him. But the idea is to survive the uh, the first set of enemies, and then knock the last one into him. Now, you can try to jump and attack, but your jump and attack comes out much slower. So you're better off just sitting here and timing your attacks. It's... it's tough. The timing on this boss is... is... is pretty tough. I know when I first played this, this was definitely... probably my first roadblock on the game. There were other roadblocks after, which made the initial playthrough really frustrating. But here we go, this is the level I was talking about, and I'm just gonna mash all the buttons. Got it. So another uh, 5,000 points and one continue. Lively Lava. So some in interesting level design here, but it can be a, a little frustrating. What we want to do with our little dino dog buddy is uh, he actually kind of like follows you in. And this is actually one difference I wanted to point out um, between the Sega CD and the Genesis version. While all the foreground objects and the background objects are basically the same, uh, there's no extra background scrolling or anything like that as far as I can tell. Certain objects like these rocks are actually... Uh, they animate much nicer in the Sega CD version, so they might be uh, helped out by the Sega CD's video hardware. Just a wild guess. Either that, or maybe they're using uh, some of the Sega CD's added horsepower, or something like that. Just a very interesting uh, modification. In the Genesis version, uh, the rocks animate, I don't know, they have about four or five frames of animation, and then that's it. So they look a lot choppier when they're rolling. So very interesting difference. These enemies are called Big Bertha. <laughs> Big Bertha takes two hits. And, uh, unfortunately, you can't hit them a second time until, you know, a few frames later, so... Uh, you need to hit them once, and then wait, and then hit them again. And then watch out for these, uh, these rocket packs. They actually explode on you. And I took a hit, so I'm gonna go ahead and use my iframes, but... Looks like you don't actually have many iframes, so that was a bad call. I took a second hit. Almost did it again. All right, we have to keep pushing forward here, otherwise we'll land in that fire. There's the fat guy again. He apparently got hit by the fire. So, lots of stop-and-go gameplay in this title. Big Bertha again. Now, there's, uh, you know, Chuck, like I said, Chuck Rock 1 is definitely more arcadey. It is, it is really fast-paced. It, uh, has tons of enemies constantly flying at you. And, uh, it's actually pretty satisfying with its fast-paced gameplay. I, I likened it in my, uh, quick play, uh, to Ninja Gaiden on the NES, where, especially once you start jump-kicking it in that game, it, it, it feels like you're just jumping and cutting through enemies left and right. And I still got hit by him, even though I didn't really touch him. I was a few pixels away. So the hitboxes are also a little big in this game, unfortunately. Oh, and he shot me! He started shooting, and... Ugh. He's taking a lot of damage here. That's okay. So, oh, and I slipped off the platform. That was my fault. Slipped off the rock. I'm gonna go behind this guy. And I still took a hit! Oh my god! Man. Just stuff like that gets a little frustrating in this game. You really need to take your time. It's it's recommended you take your time in this game and you don't, like, you know, rush your way through. Otherwise, you just end up taking a bunch of hits. Now, this cave level, you can barely see in front of you. So, this is definitely a memorization-oriented level. We need to stand on our club right here. You can just look for the uh, the eyeballs in the in the dark. 
We got some bouncy enemies. Alright, so what I want to do is come down here and attack backwards. It's kind of weird, but it works. It's the only way to get through that without taking damage. Some more hidden points. Alright, go ahead and get on our club again. You have to actually hold the A button. Otherwise, Chuck will, will baby Chuck will get back off of it. Kind of like this. Let's go ahead and get on this, uh, this rock here, this boulder. can go ahead and get off of this. Always be looking out for the uh, the white eyeballs. Let's go ahead and grab that health. Go through the spikes. More free points. I'm going to go ahead and just drop straight through here. It's gonna be another flamethrower guy right here. See, one thing I did is I tried jumping and attacking, but I ended up banging my head on the wall, and my club didn't come out in time to hit him, so I ended up taking damage. Which is why, again, compared to Chuck Rock 1, you don't have as much flexibility with, uh, like, running and jumping and attacking and stuff like that. You really need to take your time. Which is a huge reason why I actually, I generally prefer Chuck Rock 1 over Part 2. Um, part 2 is still cool once you learn it, but Part 1 is just, it's fast arcade style fun. This is, this definitely has that more slower, methodical, uh, you know, Western developed platformer style. Where it's, there's a little more puzzle elements, there are a little more gimmicks. The level design is set up in a way where it kind of forces you to play it relatively slow. Now, there are some parts where you can just, you know, you can cut your way through, um, you know, if you know the the flow, but in a level like this, it's like you really have to stop. It's stop and go, stop and go, stop and go. We've got these acorns you can attack. So one other difference I wanted to note in this version of the game, uh, aside from the soundtrack, is the actual sound effect package. Now, I think I mentioned this in some of my other streams and videos more recently, but um, Sega CD games by core design had a tendency of not using the Sega Genesis sound hardware at all. It was all generated by the Sega CD, like all the sound effects are generated by the Sega CD's internal uh, sound hardware. So everything is basically sampled. I'm guessing there it's basically sampled. And uh, so the sound effect package in this game is actually way better than it is on the Genesis version. Uh, it's actually so better, so much better here. It's it's quite jarring going back to the cartridge release of this game and hearing it. Now again, like I mentioned earlier, and this is obviously all subjective and opinion based, but. Um, I found some of the, the actual tunes in the Genesis game to actually be a little more upbeat, which is kind of nice. It fits uh, action platformers like these a little bit better. The more atmospheric tunes can be cool, but uh, you need that energy in these types of games. For this part, we're just going to go ahead and just keep moving down. That is the only way I figured out how to do that without taking damage. So we just skip those enemies completely. They completely catch you off guard. I also need to jump from the lowest end there, otherwise you go back to the uh, the top platform like you saw me do. All right, auto scroller. And at the top of this section is a boss fight. Now, unfortunately, I don't think there are any health refills on this section. 
So we have to be kind of careful here. And after this, we actually have two more sets of levels, and then we're at the end of the game. Oops, took another hit, which is not going to be good for this boss fight. There's a good chance we're going to end up dying at this boss fight, because this boss actually has three phases. I think it might be the only boss in the game with three phases. Actually, that's not sure. I guess you could technically count the final boss as having three phases, but the phases aren't as distinct on the final boss. They kind of blend into one another a little more, so... All right, music change, which means we're at the boss fight. So for this first part, we got this egg. It starts to roll down towards us. I'm just going to attack it with my back facing it. And I'm going to kind of do the same thing here. And now this one I haven't quite figured out yet. He likes to dive down at you, but the hitboxes are not that great. Well, I'm getting it, so... Alright, maybe it's not too bad. Maybe I'm overthinking it. What? Well, what? <laughs> I took a hit, but I didn't actually touch anything. That's what I'm talking about. Some of the hitboxes in this game are not good. And very, very frustrating. Now, we actually got through that without dying, though, so at least there's that. At least there is that. And we figured something out, too. You know, I, I played this the other day, and I was like, how do I beat that third phase uh, without taking damage? I kept taking damage because of big, big hitboxes, but I guess if you just jump at the right time, you can just jump right over him. Yeah, we have to just uh, bust open this uh, rock, basically carve uh, a stone monument of our dad, Chuck Rock. Get another bonus there, which is nice. Alright, this is a very gimmicky set of levels. So right here, and this happens a lot over the course of this, we have to wait for these rocks to fall. Use those platforms as, um, as a shield. This guy will bounce us up. Go ahead and jump on this. Do it again. Are you serious? I still took a hit. Okay. <laughs> All right, just jump over here, jump up there. All right, so this tiger, you cannot jump on him when he's looking at you. When he's looking at you, he will hurt you. So the idea is to wait for his eyeball to close. And I died. I ran into that enemy way too early, and I bet you there's going to be some health right up here. But this is a good example of what happens when you die. Uh, baby Chuck goes to sleep, you lose a life, and you press the button, and then you come right back. Now, you have to move the screen back over to respawn this enemy. And you want to grab the balloon, just like that. And then you can jump off of it. Attack his hand. Yep, there's some health right there. So if I didn't die, I actually would have been, I would have been perfectly fine. So, that's a bummer. We could have potentially had a perfect playthrough. There's the fat guy again, he just fell down the screen. <laughs> Alright, we want to ride this goat, this mountain goat. It's the first one in this set of levels where we can do that. Use this as a shield once more. Alright, we jump up, get some bonus points. And now, oh! Okay, I was not planning on doing that. A little sloppy. I like to get rid of all the blocks if I can, because you do get some bonus points for it. Oops. This guy is really fast and very slippery. So that is something you have to watch out for. Thankfully, when you take a hit with your animal buddies, uh, it doesn't seem like you actually take any damage yourself. However, I think if the animals take enough hits, uh, you will actually end up uh, losing them. Now, these guys also constantly spawn in 
And that guy, I had no idea was going to be there, so I just slammed right into him. And we're going to have to respawn that guy again. And jump up here. Like I said, very gimmicky level design here. You've got these guys that constantly spawn. Uh, you've got the tigers, you've got the goats. Uh, you've got the balloons, you've got the rocks that fall from the sky, and you have to use the platforms as a shield. So this level will probably wreck you when you first play it, because there's so much of that stuff that'll catch you off guard. Go ahead and just stand here and attack these. And this is stuff you kind of have to know is coming up too, otherwise you'll probably end up getting hit by these things. This center platform does not fall, unlike the uh, left and right hand one. So you need to come here, do some memorization, <laughs> sit in the middle one. Oh, I did not see that coming. That is like memorization fail on my part. I should have I should have known that was going to happen. Very tight jump there. And I want to uh, avoid this rock, just run past it and then fall down here. But look! Weird enemy placement. Like, I wanted to drop down and and go into that little cubby, but I couldn't uh, because there was a guy there and I still took a hit. So, some, some very frustrating level design here. Oops, that was my fault. I attacked way too early. You want to attack at just the right time. Same thing as before. Oh, and I still took a hit. Ah, oh, it's crazy. All right, next section. Okay, so meet Morgan Moose. Uh, this can also be a little frustrating if you've never played this before. If you make one wrong move, you lose a life. So we have to actually hop on him and then attack him, and then we're just jumping. But you can barely see where you're going to land. Because the screen scrolls up every time you jump. He jumps very, very high. It's not a long section. But again, you mess up once, you lose a life. There we go, we got it. First try, which is great. Uh, you'd be surprised, I think I actually got a, a full game over on that section when I first played this. So what this guy is going to do is a lot like the, the first boss, is what he attacks you with is his hands, but... Uh, he will... the hands will go pretty much wherever you are on screen. And I have not figured out how to avoid this guy's attacks completely. They're fast, and, uh... I feel like my positioning's just wrong. Maybe I need to, like, app for the, the right hand, maybe I need to go to the right-hand side of the screen. No, I, I just... Uh, Maybe I need to stay towards the middle, maybe I need to go more towards the left. Uh, it seems like a very unfair fight, I still haven't figured this out, so if any of you guys have tips on this fight, uh, do let me know. Definitely the hardest boss fight for me right now in terms of, like, taking damage or not taking damage. Uh, but that's okay, we still have two lives left, and this is our final set of levels, and those red drops do hurt you. So you don't want to touch them. And some of these, uh, these faucets, we can actually turn off by hitting the, uh, the spigots. There's an object up there that's gonna fall down. You wanna just recognize those and then just let them do their thing. I mentioned it on my channel backer stream, uh, but the music here sounds like it's a, it's a lot like uh, the uh, Playland table from uh, Pinball Fantasies, which was also an Amiga game. Not by Core Design, but it does sound very similar. Kind of a weird uh, musical choice here. I think that the music in the Genesis version for the final levels is a lot better. Oh, what am I doing? Man, I'm just, like, taking hits left and right. 
Again, I, I probably could have not taken hits if I took my time. But I wasn't taking my time there, unfortunately. All right, let's go up here and get some uh, some extra goodies. All right, a rock's gonna actually fall into here. You have to sit here for a little bit, otherwise it doesn't happen. And then you start wondering what the hell you're supposed to be doing. All right, just take our time. Don't want to get hit by these guys again. But we're actually close to the uh, the final boss now. It's not a very long final stage. And, you know, I, I'm getting hit by these objects on the ceiling that uh, could easily be avoided if I was taking my time, but I am not taking my time. Got hit by that fish. Now, to come up with my usual excuses, I will say I'm very tired right now. Uh, I've been up all day. And it is actually New Year's Day, or not New Year's Day, New Year's Eve after, as of uh, recording this. And I will be up much longer. Still not determined if I'm going to stream on YouTube yet tonight. Of course, this video will be posted weeks after the fact, so you guys will already know whether I've streamed or not. Um, and yeah, and I already recorded my Wolf Child playthrough in the same session. So I'm tired, I'm hungry, and I'm not paying attention at this point. So... So the, the playthrough actually went pretty, pretty well for the most part. We actually had... Uh, you know, some, some smooth levels for sure. But this is our final boss. So I'm not going to complain too much. So what you want to do is wait for his uh, his arms to go down and then just kind of follow him back. I don't recommend attacking while he's moving. Alright, now we can just attack his feet. Alright, we just have to smack him up top. And interesting, this character's name is Brick Jagger. His sprite is completely different in this version of the game. Uh, that's actually actually a major difference. And I'm not really sure why they did that. Maybe they, it was just easier to animate him on the, uh, <laughs> the introduction screen. Or maybe that's how he was in the Amiga game. Um, but that is Chuck Rock 2. And another huge difference is the ending is extremely short in the Sega CD version. Uh, in the Genesis game, you get a, uh, you know, enemy, uh, you know, farewell, and it tells you, it shows you all the enemies on, on stage and gives you their names, and the names are really funny. Um, and there's actually ending text as well, saying, oh, uh, you know, baby Chuck saved Chuck, and, you know, his wife Ophelia was so glad to see him, and blah, 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 and there's a whole lot of extra story and stuff like that, which is uh, pretty cool. Now, I, I have wondered if... You play this version on hard if it gives you that. I don't know, because I haven't done that. If anybody knows for sure, uh, let me know in the comments section below. I'd be interested to, to know. Maybe I'll try it myself, but Chuck Rock 2 can be a little frustrating if you're not paying full attention, which I was definitely not paying full attention towards the end of that playthrough. Um, and, and like I said, it's, it's also a frustrating first-time playthrough when you try to learn the game, but once you get good at the game, it actually gets pretty fun. And uh, it's a different beast than Chuck Rock 1. A lot of people uh, have written online that they like Chuck Rock 2 way more. And I, I could probably see that, um, you know, once you learn the game. But I, I found it to be a lot more frustrating to start. Chuck Rock 1 I was able to whip through much easier overall. Um, and it was just, like I said before, uh, more arcadey, just just like arcade-style fun. Uh, much faster pace, just ripping and tearing through enemies um, like Ninja Gaiden. So... But yeah, this is still pretty cool too, and if you're going to play this game, um, the audio package is, in, is definitely improved in this one. 
uh, and that introduction is really nice as well. Uh, but the gameplay and level design is pretty much identical to the Genesis version. So if you only have the cartridge release of this, um, you're not really missing out on a ton by not having the CD version, but there are definitely some uh, some things that were smoothed out in the CD version. Like the Genesis version actually has some slowdown here and there. It's not a lot, um, but like in the very first level, for instance, when there are some big birds, uh, there's a little bit of slowdown when you attack them, like, like you know, it's raining and stuff like that. And the Sega CD version, it pretty much never slows down. So there are some quality of life improvements on this CD release as well, which is cool. So, but uh, yeah, that's going to do it for me, guys. That is, as the game says, the end. And uh, what we're going to do is go ahead and get out of here. So uh, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this quick play. Uh, for those of you guys new to my channel, feel free to subscribe. I've got a lot of videos like this and probably many more to come. Um, for everybody already subbed, thanks for your continued support. Feel free to give the video a thumbs up and see if we can get these videos hitting more in search results and whatnot. Uh, that does help me out. Not necessarily you, but I do appreciate it. And uh, yeah, uh, that's going to do it for me, guys. So I guess until the next one, take it easy.